Well, they didn't grow up. I got a secondary school. This came around the other day. Where from? Oxfam, of all people. Being distributed to senior secondary school students throughout the world in all the Western countries to compete in a competition to paint a picture. This will be the artistic, creative kids. And if they do that, post-secondary students invited to create a canvas for change. Your canvas will be used to urge Australian and world leaders to take strong action when they meet in December and negotiate climate change solutions. And the prize, of course, is the winning picture from Australia and the winning picture from New Zealand. So on top of all, go to a display in the foyer of the United Nations building in New York. They'll probably fly the successful kids over there. What school teacher could not encourage the artistically creative kids to have a go at this? How curmudgeonly of Professor Carter to suggest it's propaganda. It's rank propaganda. <coughs> well, that's okay. School kids are school kids, and we all know they grow up. They go to university. In the university, they meet real, mature adult teachers that will give them both sides of the question. They might go to the University of Pennsylvania. They'll run into Dr. Michael Mann. And Dr. Michael Mann produced this famous hockey stick graph, which depicts temperature from 1000 to 2000 AD. There's more or less flat, a little bit of variation, and then here's, whoops, here's us and our emissions in the 20th century. You probably all know, this is one of the most famous uh, miscaginated pieces of statistics available, that this graph was designed to replace this one, which was the one the IPCC used before, which recognised a warm period around 11, 1200, called the medieval warm period, uh, which is significantly warmer, perhaps a degree or two, uh, warmer than today. And of course, whilst you're accepting the scientific graph which has this on it, you cannot create a scare campaign about this. So as somebody wrote at the time, on the record, one of the senior IPCC scientists, we've got to get rid of the medieval warm period. <laughs> Here's the dragon slayer. Somewhat surprisingly, his name is Stephen McIntyre. He's a mining company executive and financial analyst. I hope he's doing well this week uh, in Toronto. And he happens to have done a degree in maths and statistics and have a real depth of interest and ex uh, expertise in that. He spent two or three years exploding this and showing basically it is almost fraudulent science. It's a matter of opinion whether it's fraudulent or not, but it is very definitely contrived statistics. Well, that used to be the most famous propaganda picture of the 20th century. It's been replaced by this. Just before the close of the century, this is now the most famous propaganda curve. It appeared seven times in the IPCC's 2001 report. It was exploded by Stephen McIntyre, so it doesn't appear once in the fourth assessment report, which came out last year. Of course, my daughter might go to an Australian university, at which she will meet uh, low-key, uh, modest people like um, <laughs> Tim Flannery. And uh, Tim's uh, uh, contribution is when we go to war, we have a war cabinet and a war economy. We go to on a different footing in order to deal with the immediate threat. We need to do that with climate change. Interestingly, that might actually be true in another year or two's time, and it's not going to be warming that we're going to be going onto a war, a war footing for. Well, I know, you know, schools, universities, they're all the same. They're full of these wet people that indoctrinate our kids with all these trendy ideas. They don't really give them education. But the kids will be fine because they'll read the newspapers. And we all know the newspapers are full of fearless, independent, investigative journalists. Here's a typical piece. Every credible piece of scientific advice we now have, including that of Australia's big scientific body, the CSIRO, tells us climate change is accelerating faster than previously feared bullshit. I mean, where does this guy get this from? This is total, utter nonsense. So, is the implication that CSIRO have said this? CSIRO never said this. But, they're culpable. Because equally, they never write a newspaper and correct these statements. They're quite happy to have these statements run by the ignorant, forgive my choice of word, but they are newspaper reporters. <coughs> okay, well, that's local newspapers. Let's have a look at some magazines. <coughs> One of the world's largest US weekly magazines, largest business. US Journal, one of the leading newspapers, The Times of London, Hollywood, Hollywood Light, New Zealand's leading public affairs commentary magazine, New Scientist magazine, the late lamented Bulletin magazine, National Geographic, The Australian, and believe it or not, the most influential publication on this whole 
page in Australia is Garden Australia and Peter Cumble. And even they are running these great, written by CSIRO and the Bureau of Meteorology, special issues on climate change and how you plan your government. That's the balanced free press for you. I get the impression there's a bit of a message coming through there. Since 1987, time has been running one of these beautifully designed graphic covers about every two years. Well, newspapers, magazines, that's, you know, fish and chip stuff. Let's go and buy a quality book in the bookshop. After all, there's a major section that's full of all these major books. And look, some of them are actually good books on global warming. Unstoppable Global Warming by Dennis Avery and um, Fred Singer. An excellent book analysing the 1500-year uh, climate cycle due to solar activity. But it's surrounded by, for every one book like this, there's nine books like this. Living in the Hothouse, Ian Lowe, The Weathermakers, Tim Flannery, Scorcher, an appalling piece of political polemic by Clive Hamilton, George Monbiot, a famous British um, radical green environmentalist, Mark Linus, another one, and this is the British chief scientist, David King. My advice to the bookshops is they need to have a new category, not nature for these things, they need a category called the eco trash. <laughs> and regrettably, about 60 or 70 percent of what is in the nature section, not just the global warming stuff, needs to go into eco trash. Do you know what? Somebody spotted there's a problem. I mean, you do get a bit of an impression from all that there's a bit of a problem with the information flow. It seems to be one way, and it seems to be on message. The problem is the totalitarian control of information. The technique begins at the relatively invisible level of determining public perception, waging war through the media to suppress areas of reality. Their campaign is a prelude to a kind of totalitarianism based on the control of information and subversion of truth. Core techniques to turn truth on its head and then relentlessly repeat the untruth. It recalls George Orwell's 1984 message. Well, that's actually not a bad description, is it? What's going on? <clears throat> Who wrote it? What's it about? For every one article you'll read by Bill Kinnamont, which is a rational discussion of climate change in the papers, you'll read 19 by the climate zealots. This gentleman is such a climate zealot, or scale span in the US. And he is complaining here about Bill Kinnamont. <laughs> He's complaining about the fact that newspapers dare to publish, just every now and then, an article from Skeptic. Well, our daughter has uh, tried to close her ears to a lot of this stuff, because she's grown up in a lovely family, being your daughter. And you've encouraged her not to be indoctrinated by all this. And now she looks around for a job. And she thinks, well, I'd like to join a pedigree organisation, the world's leading government research organisation, meteorology, the British Meteorological Office. And they're advertising from junior scientists, and in the same newspaper, they're actually advertising for new senior scientists. And here's what they say. Climate change is accelerating. Now, scientifically, that, meaning is that statement is completely meaningless. But it's not written in a scientific context. It's in a newspaper ad. And in that context, it's a direct lie. This is the world's leading meteorological office. They are completely unaccountable for this sort of stuff. Nobody can call them to account. So she decides she won't take a job with them. She's not impressed. So she decides instead she'll look at the Royal Society, going back to Newton and all that. 30 years ago, the Royal Society thought their job was largely to look after their membership, to worry about who they elected as fellows, and basically they were a club of uh, professional people. Well, over the last 30 years, they've moved, and they've more and more moved into an official policy advice for government. And as they've moved into policy advice for government and been paid for it, they have become compromised, and they now see their view, their, their role, as putting positions. So the Royal Society of London has produced this document which examines 12 misleading arguments. One of them is the one I put at the beginning, by the way, that the climate has now been cooling for six years. To the Royal Society, that's misleading, and they'll explain to you why that cooling really means warming. And this whole um, brochure is full of that sort of stuff. Note, this document has been endorsed by the Council of the Royal Society. They didn't ask their members. 